Hi, I'm Tom Folsom, and this is my life. I became a writer of books, like, primarily because uh, I was actually first an editor at a publishing house, and uh, there was this book uh, that had been floating around um, about, the, uh, about the life of Nicky Barnes. Uh, they commissioned Nicky Barnes to do a book, and uh, they'd gone through several writers, uh, and nothing seemed to be kind of quite working out, so I actually took over the book and uh, started from scratch and uh, sort of went underground and uh, met with uh, Nicky Barnes, the famous sort of Harlem heroin gangster uh, from the 70s. And uh, I wrote the book Mr. Untouchable. Uh, so that was uh, how we first started getting into writing and then I really got attracted to, you know, the idea of doing uh, sort of American Outlaws. Uh, the Nicky Barnes book led to uh, my book on Crazy Joe Gallo, uh, who was another uh, sort of notorious, famous gangster from uh, the 1960s. And from there, you know, I kind of wanted to do a Hollywood story, and uh, Dennis Hopper sort of seemed to have a gangster quality about him. Uh, he seemed kind of dangerous, so uh, I wanted to go there and see what his story was about. So that's how I came to the uh, to my my new book, the the uh, Hopper: A Journey into the American Dream. <laughs> you know the Nicky Barnes book. I I came to a cold in the sense that like that was, that was a world I really didn't know anything about. I didn't even watch Superfly. I think at the time, you know. But like other than like you know being a fan of The Godfather, like you know everybody else in Goodfellas and all that kind of stuff, um, I didn't have any particular expertise in uh, you know in the underworld. Uh, but I think that helped because. You know, I came to it fresh. I came to like you're learning these things for the first time, and so I thought I was able to like synthesize it um, sort of with a fresh eye um, because it, I don't come from that world at all. Um, and I think I made it a better book. Um, and so you know, with Nikki, it was uh, it was an interesting sort of collaboration. I mean, we really spent serious time together, and um, you know, as a documentary filmmaker, I you know I do a lot of interviews. I really know how to you know, just sort of get in there and, and get the story. So, um, you know, I was able to sort of, like, sort of help direct his memories, um, you know, to, to really get to the heart of, of uh, you know, of his story, mm -hmm. which is a really raw, um, you know, a true life epic crime tale. You know, this was a guy who tried to build his own mafia and he succeeded for a while to the point where Jimmy Carter, when he was president, said, you know, "We got to get this guy. You know, if if we can't get um, if we can't get Nicky Barnes, you know, we're doing something wrong here." I mean, this is Nicky Barnes who's showing up on the cover of the New York Times magazine, uh, you know, in his in his shades, uh, in his suit, and he's you know, and the caption is "Mr. Untouchable." You know, like he's Harlem's biggest heroin dealer, but you know, can we do anything about it? That whole so, idea of that the mob is, you know, in the Godfather's like, well, we stay away from drugs. Well, that's that's sort of a movie, that's a a movie myth. Um, you know, drugs was the biggest money maker for the mob, um, especially you know the heroin trade all coming in through the Fr French Connection. Um, they were making so much money that the feds were basically like, we have to we have to stop this. So they. Um, they went after the mob hard, and so the mob was like, okay, well, we're still going to be in the drug trade, but rather than have our own guys out in the street dealing, we're going to use, um, you know, the black dealers of Harlem, for instance, and they're going to sell the drugs for us, and then we're going to get all the money. So um, that's what fascinated me about a story like Nicky Barnes, was he was a guy who was like, well, all right, I'm a street dealer, but what I'm going to do is, like, I'm going to get all these street dealers and we're gonna make our own mafia um, so we'll be able to push back against the mob and like you know and Nicky was he did that I mean in the early 70s he was making so much money um, I don't even know the numbers but he was just um, he, was, he was becoming like a serious um, you know rival power to the mafia you actually watched the American Gangster preview with him yeah, can you that, tell us a little bit about that? Was that funny. Experience? I mean, because I, uh, you know, I went on the internet and I showed Nikki um, the trailer for American Gangster, and 
there's this scene where Frank Lucas is, you know, as you know, Denzel Washington as Frank Lucas is, uh, you know, he's he's got his arm around his mother and he's like, Mama, this this house is for you. And Nicky just like he flipped at that scene because he was like, you know, Frank's not a family man. You know, Frank Lucas tried to kill his own brother. So Nicky just, you know, I think Nicky's thing was that he wished the movie was probably about him. He wished he was sort of the star because he he really was the bigger. Uh, he was definitely the bigger the bigger dealer, and he was sort of uh, the most famous um, of that time. Definitely, you know, more famous than Frank Lucas. What's one of the uh, more interesting stories in your time writing the book that he told you? Is there any particular stories that really stuck out to you? Well, I don't know. I mean, just hearing Nikki's, you know, memories sort of from the back of his head. I mean, I liked a lot of the just the things that just were, uh, you know, just vignettes about his time. Like he's talking about how he would. Uh, he would basically like race his Maserati down the Major Deegan at like three in the morning, um, just like high off of everything, and you know I was like, wow, you know I I, I can't imagine just <laughs> you know and you know someone doing that today, like being able to get away with that kind of thing. So just this larger than life, um, you know, playing the gangster to its hilt. You know, um, I was pretty fascinated by those stories of just like, you know, because seventies in New York at the time, you got to think it was, it was not like the Giuliani era. You know, it was, uh, it was you know for it was a good time for crime. You know, um, because people could get away with so much. You know.